Hi, it's Keith. I'm here in Life Journey Production Studios. It is January 2021. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I just want to give a shout out to our subscribers. Thank you so much. Um, lots of comments. I've enjoyed that. Discovering new videos. I appreciate that. Um, so today I'm shooting from the iPhone. That's right. I'm using the ATM Mini Pro and I'm using Channel One with my iPhone using the Apple adapter um, from the lightning port to HDMI. I'm also shooting from this camera today. This is the 5D Mark IV. It's right here. And you can also see it in the front of the frame right here. And we're gonna talk about that camera, these two cameras, and all these lenses when we come back. So stay tuned. Well, welcome back to the channel. So let's talk cameras, right? There's so many cameras. You have Sony, you have Nikon, you have Canon, and the list goes on. I've always wanted to be a photographer and never could really dive into photography when I was younger. I'm now in my late 50s. Thank you very much. You can see the gray. It's earned. And today I'm actually going to use the pod mic by road and um, we have four of these that we use for podcasting so i thought i would demo the mic today as well so you can listen to that and compare it to my other videos where i have been using the uh, sure sm7b so cameras are very important obviously for photography for video production for live streaming um, and um, i also have this view right here this is a famous camera this is the logitech 1080p camera it's a couple years old and they have newer versions of this out as well so i will wave at that shot up there on top of my monitor and you can kind of see my studio set up in this shot so back to why we're here today is i really want to talk about different lenses different cameras um, why I have them in the studio and maybe help you make a decision. Now, you can tell that I'm a Canon shooter. Uh, and the reason for that is you have to pick a track. And uh, many have changed between Sony and Canon and even Nikon. There's so many great Canon cameras these days. Trust me, it's a Tyson. So if you're a Canon owner, I give you a shout out. I'm not really... Um, totally sold on Canon. I've had my issues with it over the years, but I also have some great um, stories about Canon. So let's talk first about my first camera. And that's this camera right here. This is the Canon 5D Mark III. And on it, I have the 24 to 105 lens. This lens came when I purchased my Canon 5D Mark IV, which we're shooting at right now. Right now, I have the 16 to 35 f4 lens on that to shoot wide here up close and that's this shot so that gives me this up close wide shot and so i can give you kind of a close-up of this canon camera um, this is the 5d mark iii it's a great camera um, and um, again it's not mirrorless it is a mirrored camera and um, there's the mirror you'd look through right there and then you obviously have an LCD screen on the back. It's not a touch sensitive, so I have a, a protector on it. Um, and uh, it is a great camera. The downside of this camera, guys, if you're paying attention to uh, the internet like I was, is that you can't shoot for longer than 29 minutes video on this camera. I've tried every hack. I have not um, changed the firmware because I don't want to um, get into that realm. I just have used the firmware from Canon and it shuts off in 30 minutes. And I use it many times in my studio as a downward camera. Um, that way, even if it does shut off in the middle of a live stream, I can switch cameras because I, I cut to it very seldom and I can flip it back on if need be. I even have thought about getting a quick little um, power switch so I could remotely turn it on and off. And I haven't tested that yet, though I have two of those switches here in the studio. Um, thought I had it up here with me, but I don't. So again, that's the Canon 5D Mark III. Not going to talk a lot about it, but don't buy this camera if you want to do longer than 30 minute streams or if you're shooting a wedding video and you forget to have someone stationed there. I've had some experiences with this shooting video, but it shoots great video, 1080p. Um, it only will do 1080p out. 
um, of the camera. It will do the, the outputs without um, the, the graphics on it. So it will do a clean HDMI out. So it's a great camera. Then I updated mainly because of video and the, the new Digi sensor in the Canon 5D Mark IV, and I absolutely love that. That will shoot 4K. Um, I did the RAW update in that for $100, sent it back to Canon. You can now buy it with RAW capabilities in it. I still think it's an amazing camera. It doesn't time out. It shoots great video. Um, it's still a mirrored camera, so it has the same mirror, and it's very similar, the body. Um, I have it set up here for the shot, so you can see it in the frame. The biggest difference is the sensor, um, the pixels on the photographs, and um, updated um, technology, and you can tell the difference when you put them side by side by side. Um, but they're very similar cameras, and I like to stay in the Canon camp because then it's a little easier for me to get a similar picture um, style when I'm cutting from camera to camera, though I should pay more attention to that, and I recommend that you do when you are shooting multiple cameras. And so in the studio, when I'm doing productions or podcasting interviews in here and I want multiple camera angles, I can cut to all these cameras. Today, I'm, I'm demoing the iPhone, which is my main camera. I'm also showing you the Logitech. It's a USB camera. And I'm actually recording that not on my ATM mini, like I'm recording um, this shot and I'm recording this shot. But the... The, the camera that I'm cutting to, the Logic camera, I'm actually recording into OBS and I'm putting it together in Adobe Premiere Pro later. So, so the next camera I really wanna focus in on is a camera with lots of controversy as well as lots of likes. And this is the ESR. Um, it's a mirrorless camera, so it's got a lot smaller profile. Um, the advantage of mirrorless is that you have actually um, an LED inside this, so you got better crisper focus and all that when you're using the viewfinder. That's great for photographers. I sure haven't used it as much as I've used my Canon 3 and 4 because I've been doing a lot more video in the studio, a lot less photography, though I absolutely love photography, and I can't wait for spring because I will be getting out a lot more, and I will be demoing um, some things about photography right here on the channel. So. It won't just be videography and other fun videos here, so I hope you'll stay tuned for that. So it has the same micro or mini HDMI port. I know that the new R, um, R6 and R5 have the micro. I'm not a big fan of that. I bought this camera refurbished from Canon because I bought refurbished lenses before, and I think those lenses have been great, and so I decided to go ahead and try a refurbished EOS R. I love the fact that it has a tilting screen that I can bring it around and use it. Um, I don't do a lot of vlogging. I usually have my cameras on Manfrotto friction arms um, or on tripods when I do my shooting, but I am looking forward to using this as a vlogging camera and it's a lot lighter and a lot easier to use it. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. So on this camera right now, um, it is sporting the 24 to 70. Um, this lens is a great lens. It goes down to 2.8. And if you don't know anything about Aperture, Aperture is one of the three major aspects of photography and actually videography. Um, so if you haven't started using manual on your cameras when you're shooting photography, um, we will suggest in future videos that you do that. The reason for that is Aperture actually helps you change the depth of field. What does that mean? That means that when you're focusing at 2.8 or f4, somewhere around there, the focus plane is about that deep to that deep, somewhere around there. That's good focus area. So if you're shooting at 2.8 and you don't have it focused or you don't want the background in focus, it's a perfect aperture. And so you can blur the background and focus on your subject. And that is why um, we experience we take the expense and spend the money on these more expensive lenses. And the price between this F4 um, 24 to 105 and this um, 2.8 version two was quite a bit of money, almost double the cost on those two lenses. And then on my Canon, again, I told you I'm shooting the 16 to 35, that's an F4. And that's another great lens. Every vlogger should have something that is about that wide because of using smaller rooms, shooting inside. 
The disadvantage of shooting super wide is that you start looking wider. And so I'm going to demo that right now. I'm shooting right now at um, 24 mil. But if I was to go super wide, you can see how big I get and how skewed the room gets. And I wanted to demo that. That's why I have this lens here. So until you get to about 24 uh, mil and higher, um, you don't look natural. I look a lot more natural on my iPhone, even though I am shooting wide on my iPhone. But what would really change the dynamic of this shot would be to pull the cameras back so that you can't even see this camera I'm using right now. Um, and then shoot with a, a bigger aperture and um, really make myself look really good. And that's where these two lenses, this is the 50 millimeter 1.2 by Canon. Um, and um, this is a great lens. Um, this is one of the favorite lenses a lot of people who shoot music videos use. And the reason for that is that because this will shoot down at 1.2, now the focus is super narrow. So if you have the eyes of your artist in focus, I guarantee you the background, the lights in the background, the mountains in the background, everything behind that artist, even background singers have begun to be blurred and the big lights get to be those big, beautiful bokehs. And that is the word for taking those lights and putting them out of focus. And so a 1.2 aperture is going to do a lot more of that short focus plane and give you that bokeh look in the background. And this lens right here is one of my favorites. And when we are doing lots of, I had friends doing a lot of music videos and I was helping them occasionally, this was one of the lenses they wanted to borrow the most if they did not have it in their kit. That brings me to the next lens. This is probably the number one photography lens. This is the 85 millimeter. Um, you can see how big an eye this has. Um, so, Again, super, super wide and um, wide aperture really relates into low numbers. So um, this, this um, is a really, really beautiful lens. And when you put this on someone, especially a woman, they look skinnier and they love this lens. Again, the reason for that is that you're not widening out and stretching everything in the frame. The other thing that this does doesn't not only stretch things in the background, but when you get up to 85 millimeter and higher, all the way up to 200 millimeter, you start bringing the background in. So if you want to pull that mountainscape up and put you right in it when it's far off, you use a longer lens. And um, so aperture changes the focus plane and how much bokeh in the background you're going to get. And, um, 85 millimeters and up really starts making people look good in photographs and 85 and up, which brings me to my last two lenses. This is the um, 72 to 200 and um, it's a very expensive lens. It, it goes down the 2.8 aperture and this is my macro 100 millimeter. Let me hold this up. This is the 200. Um, and um, we'll go back wide here, and the 100 millimeter. This is actually a macro lens, and what a macro lens lets you do is get in very, very close. And so to illustrate that, most lenses need to be about that far away to focus. This will get all the way in here and see all the nitty-gritty detail in the shot. So if you want to shoot a bug or you want to shoot um, through some grass and get some detail, um, and have your subject in focus as well, then um, you can do that with this, where you would get, if you were right on the front blades of grass, they would be blurred in the other lenses. There's a lot of tricks you can do with a 100 millimeter. If you do close up on a book in one of your shots, or if you want to do a close up over shoulder um, lesson plan on your desk um, or whatever that is, or notes, this will focus in very close. Um, and um, people will be able to read it. And so most close-up shots are done with a macro in the movie industry, um, as well as this is a great lens to use when you're doing video production. And then obviously, shooting with this, pulling away from people in video production, as well as in photography, is going to make them look better. They're going to look skinnier. They're going to look less skewed. And then when you add 
the throw of this 200 millimeters, that means you can really reach out and grab people. This is a great walk around lens for photography to not be in people's faces at a wedding, especially the reception. A lot of people will shoot with two cameras, one with something smaller, and, and then they'll have this on another camera and have one slung over their body so that they could quickly change to that other camera. And so, again, I love this lens. I usually will take, if I'm doing photography, I'll have one, my Canon 5D Mark IV with this on it, um, and my 5D Mark III with maybe the 85 or the 50 millimeter or my 24 to 70 because it'll shoot down at 2.8. So I just want to say that I'm, I'm slowly but surely growing very fond of the lighter weight mirrorless camera I love the, the, the picture in this EOS R. So if you are on the fence getting an EOS R or the RP, which is a little less expensive and not quite as feature packed as the EOS R, or you're thinking about jumping into the new arena with the R6 and the R5, those are amazing cameras. I don't own those um, or any of those lenses. So right now in order to use my Canon, and I have a video on this. Um, I use my Canon lenses from my DSLR days. I have to have this adapter right here um, by Canon. And all it does is adapt from the standard lenses on the EOS R to these um, older lenses. And so I'm able to use all of my lenses with my EOS R. And you can check out that video as well right here on the channel. The last thing I want to say um, about cameras and about lenses is that the real most important thing is that you get consistent, high quality video. And the reason that we don't spend, I don't spend more time on this camera, which is the, the USB camera, um, and even on my Canon camera, which I've shot a lot of live videos over the years on, not my Canon camera, my iPhone. I've shot a lot of videos over the years on my iPhone. It's fast. It's simple, it's easy, um, and you can live stream from it. There's huge advantages to just being mobile with a camera. You need to get a very quality, high quality camera uh, like the new iPhones, the new Galaxies, the new smartphones that are out there today have great glass. Um, they have good aperture. Um, they have crisp um, video and uh, I love those still to go to real DSLRs, real mirrorless cameras. Um, and um, so most of my videos will be shot on one of these three cameras. So again, those are the three cameras you see mostly in my studio. Today I'm shooting from um, one DSLR, my Canon 5D Mark IV, shooting from my iPhone and shooting from a USB camera. So you can look at the different photo quality and ask yourself, what do you think is the best? Trying to get them as close as possible on white balance and the close-up camera to show you what happens and how the wide lenses can show you more of the room, just like this Logitech camera, but it's gonna stretch me out and make me look five or six pounds heavier, where if I was to zoom this all the way in and back up, it's more of a natural look shooting at 35 millimeters right now. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit of difference. I will get outside and do another video um, and demo these lenses a little bit more thoroughly so that you can see the difference that they each make. See the difference of the iPhone. You can see the difference of the Canon and um, these L lenses that are very, very high quality. And you can see um, what a USB camera 1080p looks like and how those uh, clips of video compare. So that's it on the cameras I have here in my studio. I use them um, through my ATM Mini Pro mostly, and there's lots of videos on those things here and more to come. And so you can see the lenses that I have. And so in reality, my variable lenses, um, zoom lenses I use probably the most, but it's nice to have what we call prime lenses. And the reason we call them prime is that they don't zoom and zoom out. So this is a hundred millimeter macro. This is just a regular 85 millimeter lens. Great for photography. Um, and this is the 50 millimeter. And 
Um, so I pretty much have all the way from 16 all the way up to 200 um, millimeter length I have available to me here in my lens kit. So it's a lot of lenses. I don't recommend you buy all these lenses. You can see that I throw myself all in when it comes to photography and videography because I really want to learn as much as I possibly can so I can share it with everybody else that tunes in. So again, thanks for tuning into the video. I hope you'll subscribe. You'll like this video. I hope it taught you a little bit about what I'm using in the studio, what the iPhone looks like compared to a DSLR Canon 5D Mark IV, very popular camera and a very cop popular Logitech USB um, camera as well. And I'll put links to all of these things below um, with exception of the iPhone, you know where to find phones, but I'll put the link to the Canon 5D Mark IV, the EOS R, the Canon 5D Mark III, which you can still purchase, and each one of these lenses, including the PodMic by Rode, which is one of the greatest little microphones for podcasting and audio that you can get for $100. It's very sturdy. It's got foam inside this to cut down on the plosives, the pops, the T's, the S's. Um, and it's very compact, very easy to use, and it looks good on camera. So thank you so much for tuning in. I am Keith. This is Life Journey Production Studio, and we'll see you right here in the next video.